Hello and welcome to another video tutorial. And in this tutorial, we are going to talk about virtualization. So basically, what's a virtualization uh, or virtualization software? It is a program or a software that emulates a virtual machine or another soft hardware running on your system. So for example, if you're having a Windows machine, you can use that virtualization software to emulate a Linux machine on your Windows machine. There are several different providers of virtualization software, and of course you can go with any of them. Almost all of them, or a, all of them have free versions of their software, and of course there is a corporate or enterprise editions that will be for uh, whole clusters, data centers, for the cloud, and things like that. But to run it on your machine locally, on your Windows or on your Linux, uh, you can go with the, with the end user version and you don't need to pay for that software. So for now, I'm, at the moment I'm using Windows and I'm going to show you one of these virtualization softwares. Um, as I said, there are different uh, providers. Mainly used providers are the uh, VMware um, virtual machine from the VMware, that is the VMware workstation. And uh, the other option would be VirtualBox, which is from Oracle. So in my case, I will be using VirtualBox. Actually, I already have VirtualBox installed on my machine, but I'm just going to show you how to get it anyway. So when you, if you can see my screen, uh, just search for VirtualBox in the browser. And uh, I usually use Google, but anyway. So click on the VirtualBox.org. And uh, you get a really big logo here that suggests to download VirtualBox version 6.0. So without anything else, you don't need to do anything else. Just click on this uh, banner. And here are, are the options you have. So you have for the Windows hosts, uh, OS X hosts, which would, which would be uh, for Mac. There are Linux distributions and of course Solaris. Solaris is also uh, actually owned by Oracle, so makes sense. So for my situation, I'm going for Windows hosts. And as you can see here, I have a pop-up that uh, suggests for me to download it. And of course, I can go and do save. And just click save. And it will download the file. And I'll have it on my desktop. There is additional information here, like for example, the uh, extension pack, which is uh, something that you need. It is uh, a way a, a way to smooth this emulation and the simulation of hardware between the machine that you have the uh, hardware machine and the virtual machine. So that's definitely something that you want to have. And of course, if you are a developer, if you want to build upon that, you can use the SDK for the software development kit. Uh, there are other builds, of course. You can go for a version back in time, and uh, you have the source code here and everything. So when you have it downloaded, you just click on the uh, icon, double click, of course. It's a pretty straightforward installation. Just go next, next, next. In my case, I already have it installed, so I get to either repair it or remove it. Uh, so I'll just stop that installation here and I'll just run it from my machine so you can see how it looks and what functions it has. Okay, that's that's my virtual box uh, machine. Actually, that's my virtual box software with the machines that I have uh, saved here. These are virtual machines. So on the left hand side, you can see I have a Kali Linux. I have uh, something else we have for development here. I have a Snort Lab here. I have a Windows 10 virtual machine. There is a Arch Linux for testing, Black Arch Linux, of course, and another VM that I have uh, with some information about it. So when you click on the machine, on the right hand side, you have the general information about the virtual machine. So the name, operating system, of course, there is the locations that it is. Uh, you can see the system has a memory of uh, eight gigs of RAM. It has a boot order from, uh, of course, strangely floppy optical and hard drive. You can change that. Uh, these are some accelerations, uh, KVM, power virtualization, and so on and so forth. These are actually virtualizations um, supported by different uh, kernels and different uh, processors, so don't need to go into that much details. This is the video memory. In this case, it's a default uh, VirtualBox video memory or video adapter, so it's 
be, I'm not going to game on that machine, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, as much video memory as I need to run it, to run Linux on it. Uh, you can install or you can dedicate, if you have, for example, two video adapters, you can dedicate one of these to that machine. So if you have something that's really GPU intensive, you can run it on a virtual machine. It's going to use the actual hardware. So you're going to have to install the proper drivers for that adapter and everything uh, necessary to make it uh, run as it is on a hard, uh, hard um, on a physical machine. Sorry. So that's the storage here. I have... Uh, uh, one drive on uh, port 0 connected over a, a SATA and it is uh, 32 gigs. So audio of course, uh, there is networking here. I have one network adapter, which is in this case you can see the situation. The adapter is bridged, which means that in networking you have an option to bridge, provide net, do a host only. I'm going to go through these details uh, shortly. So we have a USB, we have shared folders. I have shared folders on my host system with my virtual machine. So I can work with the folders on my Windows machine, uh, one, with a specific folder on my Windows machine uh, directly from the Kali machine. So I, I actually use that to exchange information between, the, between these two machines. If we're doing, for example, a pen test, I have that shared folder. I have tools running in Kali that are saving reports in that shared folder. I have tools running in Windows that are saving, uh, saving sorry, reports into that shared folder. So pretty much uh, I have had everything in the same place. So of course you have an option here to do a new virtual machine. It's a really straightforward process. I'm going to show that to you. You can go into the settings of this one. You can see you have an option to change a lot of things here. You can discard the state at the moment. The machine is in safe state. So which means that uh, imagine that is something like a hibernation on a hard uh, on a physical machine on a hardware. So that's the state at the moment. If I boot it up, it will start exactly where I left it last time. You can discard that, which means that it is going to reset it to a last. Uh, basically to a shutdown state. And of course you get to start it. And if you want to, you can start it, for example, if it's a Linux machine that doesn't have a virtual, oh, sorry, a graphical interface, you can start it headless. And it's not going to have a window that you have to move around and things like that. It's just going to be running in the background as a process of your uh, physical machine. And you can connect over SSH if you want to. So, um, Okay, let's uh, go through the process of creating a new machine. So first of all, you have to name it. This is a test machine. Then you have to choose a folder where it's going to be stored. Let's just keep it here. I don't have Mac OS uh, ISO, so I'll just go with Linux. Um, you have an option here to choose between different types of Linux um, distributions. Let's just go with Ubuntu. Or if you want to, let's see if we have We can choose other, okay. The next thing you need to do is just uh, decide how much memory you want to have. So just go with something you like. Uh, I have 32 gigs on this uh, uh, physical machine, so I get to choose. You can dedicate all the 32 gigs, but uh, if the machine starts using all of them, it's going to cause you a lot of problems. So that's the green line here showing what would be a safe, um, safe memory to dedicate to that virtual machine. It, uh, it is Linux, it doesn't need that much memory, so I'll just give it 2 gigs. And the next thing you need to do is to create a hard drive. So um, you can use an existing one if you already had a virtual machine you want to use this drive, but in my case I'm going to create a new one. This is the uh, different options you have to create a hard drive, and you can always um, you can always uh, convert from one to the other after that if you want to if you want to migrate to a different kind of a virtual um, provider. So just go with uh, VDI. Dynamically allocated means that uh, the drive will be, let's say I want to dedicate 20 gigs of space for that machine, but it's going to be allocated dynamically. The, that means that if the machine just uses 6 gigs, it's going to create a 6 gigs of image file for that drive. Uh, if I use it as a fixed size, it's going to take that 20 gigs and no matter how much space or how much information I have in that drive, it's going to, even if the machine is using 6 gigabytes, it is going to still create a 20 gigabytes of a, a virtual hard drive file. This is the size we get to choose, so let's just go with, I don't know, let's go with 20. And uh, that's pretty much it. So now, if you want to boot that machine, you just click Start, and it's just going to boot. 
But the thing is that it is asking for a startup disk. So if you haven't provided it before, you need to provide it with an ISO file, for example, or, or a boot medium, and uh, you can choose it from here if you like to. Otherwise, it just won't start. It doesn't have anything to boot. So that's that's how it stays. It's a it's an error message, no bootable medium found. So keep that in mind. Uh, just power off the machine. The other thing we can look at now that we have it created, of course, we get to uh, share the clipboard with the host. We get to share and drag and drop uh, options like in Windows Explorer, for example, if you want to, of course. You can enable disk encryption, um, which is great for security perspective. You can disable floppy if you don't need it, and I don't think you need it, so just keep that in mind. Uh, here are some other options. You can change the memory again. Of course, for the CPU, I have 16 um, threads here. I can uh, dedicate, I'm safely able to dedicate eight threads to this machine and there is a execution cap if you like to, so you can handicap that. Um, moving on to acceleration, you get to choose different kinds of uh, virtualization. I would suggest not to touch that because you might run into some problems if you're not an expert and you don't really need to change that. So leave it as it is. The next thing we can look at uh, is the display and this is the amount of uh, video memory that you can actually provide to that machine. You can also provide a monitor, more monitors if you like it. I'm running this on two monitor machines so I can actually provide it with two monitors as well. Don't need to do that. This is the graphics controller here. You can get to choose some difference between the graphics. If you want to enable 3D acceleration, you would have to install it uh, under the safe mode of the virtual machine. So there are some specifications here. For Linux, you don't really need that. Um, you can enable remote display if you like to. You can, of course, record the machine um, in a video file. Here's the storage. And as you can see here, we have two controllers, one uh, on AID, which is a um, optical drive, and one on the SATA, which is a hard drive. Now, the, you can attach as many hard drives if you like to, of course. And uh, you can attach, of course, as many uh, USB or any optical drive if you like to. If you click on the drive, which says empty, you get to choose here on the CD, you get to choose a uh, file. So you can actually edit an ISO file from here and click OK, click Start, and the machine will boot from that ISO. The same thing as if you put a disk with a bootable Windows, if you remember the times when Windows was in a bootable CDs, uh, you can do that here. So keep that in mind. Audio, nothing really special here. Networking is way more interesting. So you have not attached, which means that you have a network adapter, but it's not actually connected to the machine. That's simple. NAT would be actually providing NAT network address translation from the host to the virtual machine, meaning that any traffic that goes out from the virtual machine will go through the host and uh, the IP address that will show up and the network that will be used will be from the host. Uh, there are other, other options here. Uh, I'll go with bridge adapter, which means that the host will provide direct bridge to the network interface. And here you get to choose the network interface you want to bridge it with, meaning that uh, it will share the network interface with the virtual machine and the virtual machine will have uh, its own IP address of the network that it is connected to and it's going to be um, if for example if you're using it in your home environment and you have a wireless router and uh, your your laptop let's say is connected to that wireless router with an IP address of dot one or let's say dot two for example and you bridge the wireless adapter and start up a virtual machine the virtual machine will probably have the same uh, subnet and an IP address of dot three so pretty much they will be in the same network as the host, which is okay in many cases, depending on what you're testing, what you're doing. The other thing you can do is uh, something interesting is host only, which means that it will be a virtual network between the host and the virtual machine. If you're doing it for a testing purpose, let's say you're going to run, uh, for example, a malware that doesn't really need access to the internet, but it needs some networking and uh, some network access, basically a network adapter. Uh, you can do that and you can monitor from the host what's going on in that virtual network and uh, do it for a, for example, malware analysis or reverse engineering. 
So that's that's pretty much about the network. Of course, you have some information here. You can choose the uh, adapter type, the promiscuous mode. You can go with allow VMs, allow all. Of course, in many cases, you need to allow the promiscuous mode because you're scanning, you're sniffing, you're spoofing. And in all these situations, you would need to be in that mode. And that's, uh, of course, uh, cable connected or not. You can change the Mac. You can refresh that as many times as you like. It's going to change the last uh, six characters and uh, you get a new Mac. You have to add or you can add basically you have the option to add about four network adapters. I'm not sure if you can add more but uh, they give you a four already tabs you can you can use these. So you can have for example one host only network you can have a bridge adapter and then you can have I don't know uh, internal network. So you can of course have as many different networks as you like. Serial ports, don't really use them. I've used them before and uh, they're used, useful in situations when you need to emulate uh, some old software connecting over a serial or parallel port instead of using USB or anything like that. So it might have some use for you, but I don't I don't see any, any applica application at the moment. USB, of course, you get to uh, share USB 2 or 3. If you like to, you get to add USB adapters. These are things that I have connected to my machine. And basically, uh, I can share, for example, that's the headset I have at the moment. And I can share that with the virtual machine. And it will be available as a software or as a hardware, sorry, to the virtual machine. It would need software to be run and to be installed. So shared folders. Here you get to add the folder you want to share between the host and the virtual machine. Basically, uh, you select desktop, for example. Um, you have the option to rename it, of course. You can call it whatever you like. Read-only is useful if you're doing, again, as I said, malware analysis. And if you want to just take files from the host, run them on the virtual machine, but let's say you're running a ransomware for a malware analysis. And you don't want that ransomware to encrypt everything on your machine, or at least the share folder on your host machine. So you do a read-only option here and then the files on that folder would only be readable but not writable for the virtual machine. That's one use case for you. Of course, how to mount, I would suggest that otherwise it will be available but you have to mount it by yourself and if you choose how to mount and you have installed the extension pack and the VBox editions onto the virtual machine, those are the tools and the software that you need to install on the virtual machines, as I said, to make a smoother usage of the virtual machine. Uh, it will, those tools will automatically mount that. And of course, you can choose a mount point if you, if you have any, uh, you know, preferences. So that's pretty much it. And you can play with the interface. Of course, you can add or remove files. Uh, sorry, um, you can add or remove menus and things like that. For example, the file and everything like that. So that's pretty much about virtualization with VirtualBox. And I hope you liked the video and I hope you learned something new and of course you have some new skills to use and play with. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Goodbye and subscribe.